first off, um, just to give some context, we're going to break down the class in two sessions because it's supposed to be a two hour class and I wouldn't want your attention span to diminish during the period. Um, so just give me a moment to share my screen so I can um, share this with you. So just a heads up, I may I may go out and come back again because I need to quit to enable my screen share. Just one moment. Sorry, can you hear me now? How about now? Yes. Okay. All right, sorry guys, this is like the first time I'm using this tool. Um, I'm used to like Zoom or Google Meet. But um, anyways, I'll get a hang of it. All right, Um. so good morning again. I'm sorry for for the delay for the hiccup. Um, so today's lecture is going to be around user research. And um, while it may seem like a boring topic, it is it is pretty much um, the one thing that sets user experience designers different or set them apart from graphic designers and um, visual and other types of designers, yeah? Or especially what sets us apart from like graphic designers. Um, so to begin the class, we have like different sections that will go down through. But um, like I said, um, we're gonna break the class into like two sessions, cause um, it's supposed to be like a two hour session. So we'll break it down, take it 
we'll take the first set and I'll keep the floor open for you guys to ask me questions and I can like um, respond to those questions, especially because I know not all of you are, some of you might have had some experience designing. So if you, that Q&A quick session will be a moment for you to like ask questions out, outside within the scope, but that you might have experienced or you have confusions about. Um, so yeah, my name, so to begin, I'll just give like a brief intro about myself, tell you a bit more about myself and then I'll get into it. So my name is Parklins, if I Chuku, I am a product designer at Datacamp and I am based in London, but previously I used to be based in Lagos where I started off first as a graphic designer, um, working working as an intern at Credital in like 2015 and moved on from there to join startups at CC Hub, that's like Jenny Games and my toddler and moved from there to join Chocolate City as a graphic designer as well and moved from that to running like a user experience design agency for about two years and co-founded other startups during that period. But um, then I moved on from that to, to to join PayPal sometime last year to work on a product that we needed to ship. And then I moved on from PayPal to join the Ethercamp. And that's cause I needed to move to take, to, to, um, take like a degree in design in, in the UK. So currently I study, I'm currently studying user experience design at Ravensbourne University in London, but I'm also working part-time as a product designer at the Ethercamp. So I can manage both of them. So in general, I started off as a graphic designer and then transitioned into product design, which I know is the case for a lot of the designers starting out from in Nigeria, some used to be graphic designers and then moved to product design. So back to the topic, user research. Um, so we have like a couple of sections I will go through and I'll just touch base on them. Um, but then we'll go step by step it's going to be very interactive. Um, I wasn't able to finish out the presentation, so I wouldn't have a lot of screens to share, but I would, um, I'll make it as interactive as much as I can. Um, so here, yeah. so about, so we, we, we have like the introduction to user research, and then I'll talk to you a bit more about um, why we need user research and its importance. And then I'll talk to you about qualitative and quantitative user research, then a bit about the research techniques and methods, and also about how to make sense of the research data that you get right after the research process is done. And finally, creating a user persona. So to begin, what is user research? Um, before, I even, before I go into user research, um, um, you can unmute yourself and if and talk to me a bit about what you understand by user research if any of you have an idea of user research or if you have an opportunity to engage in one before um you can please unmute yourself and tell me a bit of what you understand user research to be um hi good morning good morning um i think um user research is a way for um, designers to find out what the user actually needs, what their pain point is, so they don't design what they think or feel is the pain point of the user. Excellent. That's true. Anyone else? Hello, good morning. Good morning. What's your name? Okay, I'm a fees. Can everyone a fees? Okay, so for me, I think user research might mean like a way of going about collecting data in order to probably build an app or to create a design that will be beneficial to those intent to those that it's intended for, which is the users. So maybe to create data to solve the problem that they truly have. Thank you. Amazing. So like you guys really know really about what user research is. Um, so I would, I'll just 
try to break it down into like analogies so that um, it will better solidify your understanding about it. Um, so in detail, it's user, user research is not like a big deal. It is simply research and users. So it's pretty much research that is important for users. Research that helps you understand what the users are, that helps you gain some kind of insight, which is re which can become relevant to how you make your design decisions. Yeah, and like I said before, this is a thing that sets us apart from from product from graphic designers because this research gives us data. It is usually it is literally the evidence of the work that we've done, right? It is it is. It is the fact. It is. It is. It is. Um, it is the evidence that proved that we've done the work. It is. It is a defending backbone for our design decisions. So um, they are like, or they are like, um, what's the word? They are official terms and and definitions of what user research is. But it's pretty much everything boils down to the same thing. It is simply research that is necessary for you to gain insight about the pain points and motivations of the users so that you can use that insight to make the best design decisions right so this um so in summary it is it is what is what, what is very important is that it is to know that um you know when you're done with your design year and you're in a situation where you are making certain design decisions, but you can't really speak about your designs. You can't really say why you did certain things and why you think this approach is the best approach. And the reason why I like user experience design and user research and why I like it more than graphic design is because in graphic design, you are exposed to a lot of abstract things. You can do certain things that may not necessarily make sense because they are abstract and you cannot, you may not always know why you did those things like clearly right but it, it was just it can easily just go with the look and feel so someone can when you imagine popularly when you're reviewing like graphic design projects and the clients tell you something like oh um can you can we just try changing this to red or why can't we just change this to blue right this kind of conversations and you'd be like no we can't change it to red because your brand color is blue right but it'd be like oh, yeah, but i want it to be red i feel red is better in this place there's there's very limited that there, there, there are like limited ways you can and things right so from user the the usually people people know that user research is important but they don't really grasp the depth of its importance what i mean is um it helps the, the amount of clarity that it helps you get right sometimes is overrated or it's it's under it's underrated rather right so my point is user research is very is like the backbone of our product design and it's very important and it's not a big deal it is it is basically just you doing conducting research to understand who you're designing for asking the right questions who and and the reason for this also is that it helps us learn a bit more of the users so that we can feel their pain so that we can we can create empathy because as you know empathy is like a very integral part of our design process as user experience designers when empathy is involved it becomes easier for us to put ourselves in the user's shoes and think of what the users will be facing in a certain period of time when they're using the product 
right? And so that's where user research comes to play. So the, why do we need user research? We need user research to know about the users, to know about what they want, and we use this insight to better inform our design decisions, quite simply, right? It is, um, again, it is just that and not such a big deal. It is, it is, it's a simple technique and user research is because it's process driven so you do not have to like cram certain things so long you so long you follow the process you'd be able to reach the end result you do not have to be overly knowledgeable in this space you just need to follow the process step by step and then you get to the result we want to get to so when user research there are two major primary types of research and every other technique so there are the types of user research and their techniques and user research methods, right? So those user research methods are influenced from the types of user research. They come off from the two major types of user research. And the two major types of user research are qualitative and quantitative research, right? So both of these form the major research areas right which is usually um attitude based or behavioral based and analytic based so what i mean is you know the difference now now i'm, I'm trying to talk about qualitative and quantitative research with qualitative research it is um usually around the user's behaviors their pain points their their motivations trying to know about who they are, what they do, what are the things, what, are, what is their story, what are the things that influence them, where do they spend most of their time on, how do they think, who are they really, right? But quantitative yeah, is... Come again. As in, hey, God. Hey. <laughs> Hello. That's not what I look for her in the best place. She wish she said, we'll see you on Monday. I'll go and stay on my own. Hello, Um, I think... Maybe can you try and mute Adora, Anita? All right, so like I was saying, um, we have two major types of user research and that's qualitative and quantitative. You know, in primary school, most of us are from Nigeria. You know, in primary school where we have this quantitative reasoning and verbal reasoning, right? Quantitative reasoning, you see it's usually, sim it's, it's, it's soft maths where they'll be like, oh, if two boys have so and so, so it, it is basically like um, mathematics, quantitative. It, it, it's, like, um, it's like how you quantify something, right? So in user research, the quantitative research is usually analytical driven. Right. It is it is it is research that helps you quantify how users do certain things. So which is why and, and this 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 core part of the different types of research is what influence the different kind of methods that you go about. So if you want to conduct qualitative research, there are different methods you will go around. And if you want to conduct qualitative research, you would use techniques and methods that would help you get analytical data around what you're trying to research about, right? So with qualitative research, it is it is usually around our behaviors. And for the types of, we, these types of research are, the kind of research that revolve around um, qualitative research are like user interviews and focus groups. And those two, those kind of research, user interview, focus groups, and site, vis and site visits, right? Those two, th those three types of techniques are very important for like qualitative research because they helps they help you understand they help you in this research you ask like open ended questions which those open ended questions are questions that leave room for like for 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 a deeper level of conversation that leave room for for the users to be able to share more detail right. But closed-ended questions, for example, are like, oh, um, how many times do you use the app in a week? 
they say twice or once and it ends there right those are closed ended questions but open ended questions are questions that that exposes um that that gives the opportunity for the users to explain to talk to you about to talk to give more insight about what they are going through or what the particular pain point is at that time so for instance if i'm trying to phrase if i'm trying to ask an open ended question an example of that would be something around so i'll just for example i'll say talk to me about um talk to me talk to me about how you go through talk to me about how you how you go about um with making a transfer from your account to your friend's account right so when questions like um open-ended questions are questions that invite the users to like share a bit in detail what you're asking them about so when i tell them for instance talk to me about um how you go through the process of sending your friend's account user I'm like the user would then instead of user to say yes or no you'll be like oh first of all i start by by going to the app and clicking on this and selecting this account and moving but then when i get to this part this 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 a call right or for example another a good another good example would be like think back at the last time think back at think back talk to me about the last time you used our product you use this product to make to send a transfer to your friend or talk to me about so those kind of questions invite people to talk so in 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 qualitative research in like in quality in qualitative research where you're conducting user interviews it is mostly recommended to use open technique is very relevant for like things like research and um, things like surveys right when you're sending out surveys to people they're usually close-ended questions like um where they, where they either have to select where they either have to select um from from like a checkbox or they select something like that so for instance um how frequently do you do you send money in a month so, and the options would then be once in a week twice in a week or four times in a month or something like that and then they pick and at the end of the research you are able to gather data where it is quantifiable you're able to quantify insight about the users where you will not end up saying something like oh 60 percent of the users spend time 60 percent of the users um send money twice in the month using this app right that is quantitative research and the insight that you get from quantitative research is quantifiable and analytical. It gives you percentages to help you understand the frequency of the user's behavior, right? But with qualitative research, it helps you understand the user's story. It helps you understand the user's pain points, their challenges in different forms and different ways, right? Um, so these are the two critical or primary differences between qualitative and quantitative research. They are both important, but they are they both help you reach um, different goal or different insight about the user. But those both those information are relevant and very important in how you make your user decisions, right? Um, so I'll just stop here for a bit and give you guys question, um, give you guys the opportunity to like, let me know if you're following and maybe ask questions if you have any. Hi, Parklin. Good morning. Yeah, so I wanted to ask that you should please um, um, segregate the qualitative and quantitative uh, methods. That's okay. I, I remember taking down that interview is on that qualitative. So I just wanted to be sure on the other uh, methods where they fall under either qualitative or quantitative. Okay. Thank you.
You're welcome. Morning. I was also going to say the same thing because you didn't um touch on the other methods like A B testing and some others that I saw. Okay. All right, real I'm trying to change create a section leave. Good morning. Good morning. So I'm I wanted to ask that okay, while we are carrying out um, user research, can we can we have a combination of both um qualitative and can we use um, for our user research? Yes, yes, we can. That's that's a short answer, but I'll explain afterwards. Yes, we can. Just give me give me one moment. I'm trying to arrange both of them into different views, A B testing. Hello. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Uh, so my question basically is why you are using the quali the qualitative aspect of research. Can you also have like in the on the Google form, can you have like some open ended question? Because I think the, the the reason for research is for you to understand the user pain point. And I noticed here in Nigeria there's more around the qualitative aspect of data gathering than the quantitative aspect because I did one of the projects I'm working on. I did quantitative, the quantitative type of user research. And I noticed that a lot of patients are not forthcoming. Like you have to go around begging them, please, can you jump on this stuff with me? And that's where the monetary aspect comes in, where you have to motivate them. Okay, there's something in this for you. So I'm trying to understand that. Why you can't easily go through the quantitative aspect? Is it right for you on the qualitative part on your Google form to put in some open-ended questions? Okay. Um, one moment. Sorry, guys. Sorry, if I can chip in. Someone help me uh, note these questions down. Okay. Um, sorry, one sec. All right. I was able to do this briefly to separate them. Okay. Um, is it okay for me to just touch around a bit on the questions that I've gotten so far okay. for I love okay. some more room. All right. That's so good. all right, so I try to separate both of them. So this is qualitative research, right? And with qualitative research, it is the research that allows you to learn a lot more about the user behaviors, right? And and the type of methods or methodologies that are most effective for this type of research is um with site site field visits, inquiry method, focus groups, and user interviews. And the reason why these types of method, this type of techniques are most effective for qualitative research is because they give you an opportunity to interact with the users like one-on-one, -on -one, right? Either face-to-face -face or on a Zoom call or, but there's, there's, there's a user interaction with the user and that gives you, um, so it, they are usually more of a, this kind of this to this kind of um, research methods of time, they are not something you stumble upon. As in, because you have room to prepare for them with the users, it enables you like the users are in a more comfortable position to talk to you a bit more about their pain points, right? And the different within either of all of these research types, you can do either of the methods between them, either open-ended or closed-ended questions but they are most effective, you will not be taking advantage of the, of the benefits of the different sections. So now with qualitative research, if you ask closed-ended questions, you get a response from it, right? But it would not, it would, it is the room as in, it would not serve, it would serve you a lot more to focus on open-ended questions because this opportunity that you have to engage with the user one-on-one, -on -one, it will be most effective for you to get them to talk a bit more about their challenges, talk more, about their pain points instead of answering just yes or no questions, right? It'll be most effective for you to get that insight to get, and it's easier for you to get them because these are like one-on-one -on -one sessions where you'd have either schedule a session with them. The users are aware that are going to be speaking to you today about something and they are prepared to like talk to you. They're mostly, let's say they'll be in a comfort zone and you'll be in your comfort zone and you can go back and forth with questions, right? With qualitative research, 
the difference with qualitative research methodologies and techniques is that first of all and you would and i think you would notice when you put qualitative open-ended questions in quantitative research methods like in a survey you have the tendency for people to not finish that survey because um usually surveys are supposed to be very fast if people people are not people are not prepared to like just go there and and do it for you they, they, they either just stumble upon the link or is that you like oh guys please just take five minutes to like feel this research form for me if you go and now start adding open-ended questions and a lot of questions that are supposed to be done in an actual face-to-face -face session you will have a very low completion rate right and at the end of the day your data will be inconclusive no not so many people would have the patience to sit down and go through it which is why closed-ended questions are most effective in qualitative research so in in quantitative research so you see this two technique for instance a b testing a b testing is where you have to test between a or b like when you have to test between two versions of a particular pro um, design that you're working on right or a particular process two that just one two so if i'm if i'm coming and i'm saying oh this a b testing high partners can you take like five minutes to decide which do you think is best a or b i know i'm i'm coming there i'm not i'm not giving you any qualitative data i'm just speaking immediately a or b and i can go you have higher completion rates with that case right and what at the end of the day let's say 100 people participate in this a b test you would have analytical data because it's either a or b right so at the end of the day you would have say 60 percent selected a 40 percent selected b so you're moving on with a you're informing your decision and picking a right but and in qualitative research qualitative research helps you understand i feel like Qualitative research is very, very effective when you, when you want to create a user persona. One of the benefits of qualitative research is because it helps you build a user story. You're able to understand the users. You're able to know, okay, this guy is from Mushi. He goes from Mushi to Lekki every day. And um, that explains th that, that. And because of that, he doesn't have time. He uh, complains that he gets home late and there's no time for him to study online and he can't go to school and this kind of stuff, right? So that gives you qualitative research gives you an opportunity to learn about how the user behaves how they think what are their motivations what are their pain points what are the things that frustrates them yeah and people cannot easily sit back on the form it is boring for them to sit on a on a survey form without any interaction with you to then go through those things but in in qualitative research methods like user interviews you are there to like guide the users so the users are not having to think about it themselves and assume what the context is you're asking those open-ended questions for to now start responding right but in, in an interview in a user interview if they're getting tired they can be motivating them like saying oh i have just five questions for you up to like three questions and they're getting tired so oh no it's just have two more questions left for you right just talk to me a bit about this one and then when they're talking to you about it you see that oh you've gotten insight about you you can now get them to stop and then when it's the final one you can encourage them and say oh just one final just the last one right just the last one just talk to me a bit about so so and so and so and so and while the users are even giving you their feedback or giving you their insights you can be supporting the conversation with giving them some kind of visual assurance that you are following them and you're understanding right that's the benefit of 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 um the of qualitative research methodologies because it's in a more controlled environment where you're able to influence the users and encourage them to complete that process with you right but in qualitative research it is it is built to get analytical data right about the users and this research tool so of course you can put open-ended questions in but it is it is most effective to focus on closed-ended questions that helps you get um analytical quantifiable insights about the users i i hope this 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 makes sense so can i ask a question yes please yeah. okay so in that a b test in under quantitative right so let's say i um i'm to work on a website design and i was also told that like when you're doing it's only when you're working on a product that you have to like conduct extensive user research 
that yeah. you, for web design, you just do maybe computer analysis. So let's say I want to use A-B testing. Is it that I'm going to compare two different computers' websites, like ask people to like, um, choose one or two based on some factors? Does it work like that? Um, okay, so A-B testing is usually comparison between two things right so whichever the approach is it is either a or b so it is mostly effective for like for like a process that you're trying to evaluate or for like a particular design so but i missed your question when you talked about comparing two websites can you go over it again so i get your context okay so i was saying like i want to design let's say a career coaching website right yeah so and then I want to um, make use of the quantitative method using, I want to use A-B testing. Okay, let me just say like, okay, how do I go about that? How do I use A-B testing for your website design? Okay, so I don't think you would use, it is most effective to use A-B testing okay. when you just, when you're starting out the project, okay. right? It is not it is not effective to compare like two websites that are already built. Okay. Right? It is that, that that is a lot of detail for somebody to like um absorb immediately okay. to then give you it will be biased, it will just you may not get okay. effective data. Okay. But what you can do before the before what what you can do before um what you can do before starting like the, the 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 website if you're trying to what you can do in place of a b testing is to sit down with those two websites and conduct something called a ux audit right the ux audit is where you go through all the different sections of the website and try to point out what was done right what was done what could be better what was done right and what can be better and then you can evaluate that side by side with what you want to do and see if there's an there's an advantage from your end. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's the only method I can use. Okay, so if you if you're trying to create like a coaching website, um, yeah, you and you want insights, right? So yeah. the insight you if you, the insight you want is use um insight about the users, and the best way would not be to conduct A-B testing, you will not learn about the users when you do, when you put the two websites side by side, you'll be learning about the website instead, right? A-B testing is usually at the end of, is, 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 that it, is, is, is for testing, like, um, it's, 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 what, it's like a method or a technique you use when you're already, when you've already started like the design process about to begin so what i mean is um when you're about to begin a design project the, okay. the, the kind of research you need is the research that helps you understand the users okay. and that research is um like the user interview which is qualitative research and a bit of um quantitative research as well right so that's what i can use not a b testing yeah a b testing is when you already have something you yeah. want to test where you have two ideas that you want to try out but you are not sure which one is most effective and you bring okay. it to the users so that usually in the team now of let's say you're working in a design team and you guys you have you come up with like a particular way to solve a design problem but okay. um, someone else on the team come up with another one but both of them okay. are good processes okay. the best way is to now take them to the users and okay. have them speak which okay. ones they are able to use effectively. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Hi, Patrick. It's Hello. Good morning. Good, morning. good morning. What's your name? This is Gona. Oh, hi, Gona. Hi, Patrick. Um, it's been a wonderful session so far. Thank you. Um, oh. I just need a bit of a clarification. So, um, we're talking about competitive analysis, and you just mentioned the. Um, ux audit so is it the same thing or is it different okay um ux, UX audit is not the same as qualitative it's not the same as quantitative and qualitative ux audit is is like a review 
of the website, matching those reviews based on certain objectives that must have been set before the UX audit. So it is, it is basically testing things based on UX heuristics and accessibility and best practices. So you are matching, you are, you are, you are evaluating certain things based on design principles, based on best design, UX design practices and things like that. Right, so if I'm evaluating, say, a website, I'm conducting like a UX audit on a website, what I'll be, an example, okay, I think I have an example I can share afterwards. So an example of the things that I'll be focused on will be, will be, say, um, how the best experience that are recommended and how I feel this is not the best experience based on some kind of mental model about the users or mobile responsiveness. We have like mobile best practices, how the buttons are supposed to be bigger so that your thumb can click on them, how the items on mobile are supposed to be evenly spaced so that you are able to click on one without mistakenly clicking on the other, right? Those kind of things, like you're matching, you're basically testing, um, you're, you're basically auditing the UX design work that has been done based on some certain principles and best practices of UX design. Okay, um, thank you. So that means it's um, it's not exactly the same thing as a competitor analysis. Um, no, it's no, it's not exactly the same thing. Computer analysis is is where you evaluate to the friend when you evaluate your competitors and see what they have that is to their advantage over what you have and usually it is usually around features their process and things like that it is not it is not around how it is best on mobile how the mobile experience is the best it is um let's say we we um the process will go through our onboarding process on this product is shorter than the onboarding process of these people the pricing on this website is five pound and the pricing on this one is 10 pound, right? So it is competitive analysis is the, the features that make them stand out. The UX principle and mental model are standard across all UX products, across all different companies. Like this is the same across every company. It's the same, it is, that's why it is like best practice. It is not a competitive advantage. It is what it is, the principle of what should be happening to get. Do you understand, Gunnar? Are you there? Yes, I do. Absolutely. Thank you. I do understand. Um, sorry, I just wanted to chip it in. Probably you could use um examples of real life objects. I'm sorry, products, so that you can understand better, like products that are already there that are doing well, that kind of everything. That are doing okay. So we use the research. Like in comparison, like if you're explaining anything, I mean, like anything at all in design, like so maybe like maybe um Amazon. I mean, like products that are companies that are already there that are doing. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Okay. Like when you were explaining um comes to analysis now, like you could have used two different companies or something, like it could it will stick better. Um. So I, I, I'm not able to do that right now because these are coming like impromptu. So the focus of the class is not about competitor analysis. It is um, really about user research. But the question he asked was, was something that is outside of scope, but um, I needed to give some kind of clarity on how that is different, right? So there's, and usually companies do not put, put, do not put public their competitor analysis only a few, okay, I think a few do it. And let me just see if I can bring. No, I think you don't get what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. It doesn't even like have to be real. I'm just saying it's just an explanation method that will probably like make us understand better. Like if you, if you, if unless you have like a specific question, that's the only way like I can make, like I can have clarity. Okay. On can, can I, can I come in? Hi, Bello. Yes, um, I think what she means is, okay, let's say for instance, uh, the A-B testing for instance. So uh, she's saying you could have used, let's say YouTube and say, okay, this particular, <clears throat> excuse me, this particular icon on YouTube, uh, they could have uh, done it in such a way that, okay, you have this icon in two ways. 
then they make users choose which of the icons is, uh, they would prefer, you know, that's A-B testing. So she's trying to say she use uh, uh, an example that we are familiar with for right. any of the things you are trying to explain. So she's right. not particular about computer analysis. She's just trying to say anything you are trying to explain, we should use live examples so it would stick better like that. Exactly, exactly. I understand you. So, um, um, like I mentioned, I wasn't those. I wasn't able to like finalize the presentation, which would have had examples of all those things. So I'm happy to talk about them. And if there's anything that you do not have clarity on, we can just do a quick research where I could show you briefly what the two things are. But you would have to be. It has to be specific. Like if you talk, if we get to the stage when I ask if you have questions around certain things, and you still do not have clarity around it, I can quickly just share something and give you insight. Does that help? Does that help, Bello? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. It does. Okay. Come in, Franklin. Franklin. Come again. Hello, good morning. Hello. Good morning. Sorry, um, I actually want to ask on this um, qualitative and quantitative research, like what? Are you there? Yeah. You're breaking. Can you come again? I did I didn't get you. I think I think you went out of the call. Can you go again? Good now, can you hear me? Okay, so um, let me just show you briefly an example of like a UX audit that I did recently for a website. So this is, I just came through. It's like a UX audit, but it's just really around what the objectives are, the service is a UX heuristics. So it is usually around what the best UX practices are and how does it not go um, in light of that, right? But all of these things are this and like after I, I would, all I did was go to the website, take notes, take screenshots of certain things that I feel could have been better, the experience and things like that, and created a a, a user flow of the existing process and to flag that this process is not the best effective process for how it's supposed to be accessibility guidelines for how things do not align and how the contrast of certain things are inaccessible for people who might be blind sighted or short sighted and things like that basically mobile responsive and how the it is it is not the best ways on mobile and based on mobile best practices and things like that right so this is like a brief example of UX audit, but that is completely different from like um, user research because um, it is purely focused on on the on the on the usability based on UX practices of that thing that you're auditing. That's why it is UX audit. You're auditing like the UX of it. Hope that that gives a bit more clarity.
All right, are you guys there? Yes, we yes, are. Yes, we are. Yeah. Right. Do, do you have clarity between qualitative and quantitative research now? Yes. Yes, we do. It's not clear now. Me, I do. Yes. Okay. Do you understand the benefits of of the difference with why why um it's recommended to to like when you're conducting like quantitative research, you focus on like quantitative research. You focus on like um, the best possible ways that help you achieve and get your results from it, right? So, because um, at the end of the day, quantitative research helps you you're supposed to get quantifiable data from it which helps you inform your decisions right but um if you if you focus on close-ended questions instead of open if you focus on open-ended questions instead of close-ended questions it will be difficult for you to to meet the goal of that particular research which is to get quantifiable data or if people are giving stories about um if, you're, if they're asking open-ended questions, whether they're able to write their own um, unique context or response to the question you're asking, it would be difficult for you to quantify how many people said the same thing, right? But if you already have pre-answered questions or pre-answered responses, um, we would have, okay, I, you would have like different people already. Um, you, you, you would you'd be able to say, oh, 60% did this, 20% did this. Um, I think um, there's a way I can share like an example of this research because I did, um, I'm working, I did um, in school, um, I did something similar. Forms. Okay, so at school I did I was working on a project in, where I needed to come up with like the the I needed to come up with like research around the five ways to mental well-being. It's a project that I'm working on currently in school. And I did I created like I did quantitative and both quantitative and qualitative research. I'll try and show you guys an example of that. Why am I not having this data? Okay, so this is an example of qualitative research. I mean, quantitative research. You see that 